what's up and welcome back to my channel now today I'm going to be giving a review for the film Madam Web now this is a part of Sony Spider-Man universe because you know that particular universe consists of the two Venom films the Morbius film and now we have this film too as well plus they have the uh, upcoming like Craven film and it's going to be a third Venom film too as well now I must admit I am very familiar with the uh, Madam Web character because I remember her from like the Spider-Man like cartoons from the 90's like that animated Spider-Man cartoon that's why I really recognize or really know her from because I know she was always on that particular show she was just like much like older looking but she you know sits in the chair with the glasses on so yeah I was kind of interested in this particular film because I was like familiar with the uh, character herself now in this particular film she's played by uh, Dakota Johnson now the film is directed by S.J. Clarkson too as well now of course Matt Webb she's like a character whose real name is known as uh, Cassandra Cassie Webb. Now her particular uh, character can has like a, well, her power I guess you could say is that she can see the future so she can see like glimpses of the future right before they, they happen. So that's basically what happens in this particular film and then she has to join with like these three girls who all eventually will have like their own powers and they must stop like the uh, antagonist of the film known as uh, Sims, I think his name is uh, Ezekiel Sims and he's played by I think it's Taha Rahim, I think that's how you pronounce it. Because he also has like a connection to like uh, the past and the past which is connected to uh, Cassandra. But the film now, this film is getting like review bomb. It, it even box office, like it even bombed at the box office. You know, it's not doing too good at the box office. But I must admit, I thought it was a, a, a pretty decent film, surprisingly. Because I was thinking that I wasn't going to even enjoy it either. But in the end, I thought it turned out to be a pretty good film. I mean, what a pretty decent like film. Now the film opens like in like in the past, 1973. And you get set this woman. She's like on this like a uh, expedition to find like, some spiders or something like that. She has like this guy along with her who turns out to be a uh, Sims. So he's actually referring, you know, they're looking for like a spider or something like that. And then they eventually find. And I don't want to spoil the film. And then again, like a conflict with uh, Sims. This is where you learn that Sims is actually like, the villain of the film because he actually ends up like you know doing something which causes him to uh, steal the spider from the woman and I just leave it at that then it kind of jumps to like uh, not really modern day but I got thinking the film 2003 I think if I'm not mistaken that's where the film is taking place at so the girl like this girl was born and she becomes like a son and she's like a, uh, a paramedic in uh, Manhattan you know she drives like the ambulance and so on like to save people and she eventually gets like in this accident but she falls under the water. Now this part I thought was kind of weird because I don't really get like no explanation to why that was there. But I guess when it jumps back to like the past and you see why this is when she begins to develop her ability to see like into the future and so on. As she has like this accident. And so like I don't really dwell on that too much but I think that right there could have been done better. But I think eventually like, the other stuff that happens later in the film kind of explains why she was able to see like into the future in order because it was actually connected to like her mother and so on. So that's like spoiler territory. Now you also have another character in the film known as um uh, there's like tons of characters. I'm gonna touch them. We have like O'Neill and he's like a co-worker of uh Cassandra. He's played by uh, Mike Epps and he does provide like the usual like you know comedic like jokes and like humor and so on. You have a Ben Parker in the, in this particular film. We all know who that turns out to be in the end, so I was kinda interested and I was hearing about like if you go inside the uh like the Marvel universe, but especially like the Spider-Man comic books. You can see that there's like a connection with like Ben Parker, you know, because you know who that turns out to be in the end. It's like uh, Peter Parker's like uncle, the one that ended up getting killed, you know, and that's why he became Spider Man, but this is like a different universe. But that particular character in this film, he's played by Adam Scott. He's a uh, cast, he's like friend. And he also has like a, uh, a sister in law who's pregnant too, as well, known as uh, Mary Parker. But throughout the film, you also have like other characters, like these are the three other major characters who are along with. Uh, Cassandra, you have a uh, Julia Cornwall, and she's like a teenage girl who lives with like her father and the stepfather, and she's played by Sydney Sweeney. And then you also have a uh, Anya Corazon, and she's like a homeless teenager played by uh, Isabella Merced, because her father apparently had left or got deported or something like that, and she's like living on her own. Then you also have a uh, Maddie Franklin, she's like a teenage girl from like a wealthy family because I think they're on a trip like in Asia or something like that and she's played by uh, Celeste O'Connor. Now they are the three other girls that uh, Cassie or you could say Cassandra must protect from uh, Sims because Sims wants to take these girls out because they're threatening to like, kill him. He keeps seeing glimpses in the future of these three girls 
eventually kill him. So that's basically what the film is about. He's trying to stop the three girls from eventually killing him because he's saying that every night he's been waking up for years, you know, and he sees like these visions of these three girls like with powers that always kill him. So he's actually out on the hunt to try to find them. But at the same time, Cassandra gets these powers in which she can see the future and she has to uh, stop them from being killed by Sims and all that kind of stuff like that. So I must admit it's kind of like, uh, it's not really complicated. But it's like they don't really give a good enough of the explanation for like certain things or certain you know uh, points in the film or certain plots in the film. So that'd be that's probably where a lot of people like is like reviewing bombing it and so on. But in uh, it wasn't like that. I think like extra scenes like uh, say uh, Ezekiel Sims. I must smell surprised like at his villain, the antagonist. It really, it really looks like Spider-Man, like the way he moves, the only thing stopping him from being like a complete Spider-Man is he's not just shooting like no webs. I mean like the way he moves and jumps around and crouches on, it really looks like Spider-Man. You can definitely tell that this is like a part of the uh, Spider-Man uh, universe because he really looks like Spider-Man. I'm hearing all the stuff from like the comics, like the origin of the song, how he really was like a Spider-Man. That you know caused that really even caused the death of like Ben Parker and caused Pete Parker to become Spider-Man like in another like multiverse type thing. But then like, it does like the action sequences were light, like light. It wasn't really, you know, if anything, if, if anybody was doing action, it seemed like it was when the Sims was like like in his Spider-Man type suit. Like he's trying to take out the girls. Like he really was all the action in the film. Because the girls really couldn't do nothing. Like you have a uh, concern who can just see the future and so on. But that was about it. But at the same time, the idea that these girls would just go with this like woman, I thought that was kind of odd and like too much. You know, they could have gave a better space to that for us. So it was like some loose ends in the film. But no joke though, in the, in the end, I thought it was like a pretty like decent like solid film. It's better than what I'm hearing from my opinion. And I know we have the upcoming Craven film too as well. So I'm looking forward to that because I've always kind of been like a fan of Craven, you know. But uh, in the end, matter well, I do feel like it was really like a C. But I kind of think it was better than that. I feel like it was kind of like a B minus. But it still was like a, a decent film. Uh, I tell you what, I'm going to get mad at where I'm going to get a C. And like I said, I do feel like it was kind of better than that. I still actually found myself enjoying it. But uh, like I say, uh, I know it's getting review bomb. Everybody's like criticizing it didn't do well at the box office or so. So I'm just going to give it a C. But I would definitely recommend it for like, you know, uh, fans of like these kind of films. I know this is like part of Sony Spider Man universe. So I'm giving a uh, mad at I'm giving this a C. Please leave a comment and uh, subscribe too as well.